All right, so welcome back to Morning Cafe. Time for that lifestyle discussion. And today we're all about beautiful nails. I mean, uh, every other lady will tell you that sometimes, you know, it's... Uh, it's key to have the best of nails first of all your nails well done i mean it gives you the confidence you march up into a room into a meeting and you you'll be like you want everybody to check on that nail so it's important that you take care of your nails whether you're doing you know the the, the artificial ones or your very own nails and on set today we have Fabian Jukia, Prince Fabian Jukia, who's joining us. He is the owner of Fabian Nails. He'll take us through, I know, a brief session on how best we can take good care of our nails. He's a well-kept. I was hoping that we'll pull a practical today. What happened? I do not see anything, any nail products on board. Yeah, I'm sorry we were not able to carry the entire salon. No, it's okay. What's important is the information that you're going to give us. Yeah. Uh, you were supposed to carry the entire salon if you were to do a practical. <laughs> if we were to do an entire practical, to take an entire salon. All right. Yeah. Well and good. So that means there's so much that we need to learn on yeah. matters nail care. And the first question then would be, how do you take care of your nails at home, especially right now that everyone is quarantined? And you know, personally, I have had so much fear of going to my you know nail technician because of the COVID-19 issue and all that so I there's that need and urge to learn how to do it at home um when at home mm -hmm. right now I would say the best way is to keep them short uh oil them uh, if mm -hmm. you have critical oil um at the same time you can always keep on filing them because if they can they are longer than they're supposed to be mm -hmm. They will break and right. because you're getting involved in that kitchen work at mm -hmm. home they can break easily uh, that is the best way just keeping them short mm -hmm. keeping them clean uh, there is nothing much you can do about it mm -hmm. if you can go to the salon uh, to tell to do the treatments there's nothing much you can do at mm -hmm. home just keeping them short but if you have to go to salon uh, and still you're doing you're still working at home and you're staying at home right. those who are doing so the best way to do it is to do short nails okay. because they will serve you longer and at the same time they will not break easily mm -hmm. and uh, yeah that's the best way I would say. All right uh, this minus nail polish or now that's optional? Uh, if you have to do nail polish there are people who do nail polish at home. All right. Uh, the best I recommend is that always use a base coat mm -hmm. and a good quality one. If you don't use a base coat uh, then you apply a colored uh, polish on on your nails mm -hmm. they will discolor your nail at the maybe in the in in, in a period of like four weeks right. your nails will discolor and they will start the color of the polish will get into the nail mm -hmm. and you, they will weaken the nail they will break them uh, so at the end of the day you'll have weaker nails than you had before. You had before. Yeah. All right, you talk of uh, nail processes that yeah. one, of course, would go for from a technician or a specialist for that matter. Yeah. Then we'd want to know what could have been, what could be the basics, you know, of, 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 you know, proper process of nail polishing or nail care, you know, as you proceed to this nail specialist. Because most of the times we go there green, we have no idea what someone is doing on you. Sometimes they end up messing your enamel even more. Ah, uh, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. Before you locate the right person, sometimes Ooh. it takes time. Okay. Because some people are not doing it out of passion. They are doing it for the money. money. Yeah. And that is not the reason because it should be the vision first and love for the work you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then money comes. Money is a reward for me. And I would say the best way to know if they serve you for like a period of one, the first time, the second time, you'll be able to know. Right. The best way, because you will see how products react because sometimes they will use products mm -hmm. that will react with their nails if uh, you find that there are people who will tell you i started doing gel polish and then after one month my nails were stronger now they are weak mm -hmm. so there is something that was used that he reacted with the nail of the client mm -hmm. and uh right there you will know this is not the right place mm -hmm. so i would say it is not written anywhere that this is the right person. And I'll tell you the realest thing ever, and I'm sure most of the ladies will resonate with this, and actually men, because nowadays we have men doing yeah. you know, nail care and all that. I mean, you go to like 50 of the nail technicians, and you still experience the same problem. Yeah. Sometimes you even have to part with so much money, just because you think, okay, well, maybe so much money means good products. I mean, at what point then do you get to know that, now that you say it's quite a process? So for me, I would say, right now we have 
Instagram, we have Facebook, we have uh, we have social media. Right. So social media for us, it's where our CV is. Mm. So you go there, like for us, we always tag our clients. Right. So we are not posting pictures that are not ours. Mm -hmm. We are not showing you what we don't do. Mm -hmm. We will always uh, post our work, mm -hmm. post the process. We have even the YouTube, we are doing a bit of the process so that now you'll be able to see what we do. Right. And then if you can interact even with our clients, you'll be able to see what they say, uh, the report they Which give, manage, yeah. yeah, how long do our nails last on them, mm -hmm. all that kind of mm -hmm. report. There are people who we have served for more than a year now and their nails are still intact. Right. And they, serve, they service their nails every single month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk about food briefly. Uh, sometimes you're told, you know, if you need to have good hair, yeah. then you need to eat well. If you need to have your skin, you know, flawless, you need to eat well. And you know, some of the key things that we value the most in, you know, anything to do with our bodies, hair, the skin, the nails, and all that. So are there specific foods that would be good for someone in the event that they want to have strong and well animated nails? Yes and no. Okay. Sometimes uh, nails are inherited. Mm -hmm. You inherit your nails from your mm -hmm. mother, okay. your father, or someone uh, from your lineage. Right. So sometimes it's not about what you eat. There are people who have weak nails since they were young. Mm -hmm. So, and no matter what they do, it, they will not become strong. There is that notion that Hina makes nails strong. Yes, no, no. hold it right there. So all this while we've been told lies because yeah, yes, lies. Hina makes uh, nails strong. Then you go to this place and then you're told, oh, there's a base that is normally used to strengthen your nails and you know, now they won't be breaking anymore. So all these are typical lies? No, they are not typical lies. Right. For Hina, I would mm -hmm. say it's a lie. Okay. But for, there are products that are there, but they don't work for everyone. Mm -hmm. So... For Hina, they weak, uh, what happens with Hina, it, uh, for it to stick to the nail, it has to like, um, what do you call that thing? It's like uh, the way acid can fall on a ground. Yes, it will have it to has penetrate, to burn and penetrate, penetrate and inside. And so if you have to file it, you'll see like dust coming off the nail. Okay. So the nail is much weaker. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, those people mm -hmm, who even mm -hmm. have Hina, they don't have longer nails yet they want to enjoy long nails. Yeah. So Hina, and per se, I would say some things work for some people, but not for everyone. So, but mm -hmm. the biggest majority, they don't work. Right. It doesn't work. It's, let's say it's just for beauty, and then there is that simple one lie right. that has been sold for a long time. So people think, ah, but no one can show you the results of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So I've I've constantly been told, you know, dip your nails and on uh, paraffin. Dip, you know, just uh, pour us a bit of uh, wax on it, hot wax, you know, on your nails, and this will make it stronger. So you clearly say that uh, you don't have to have any, you know, kind of meal that mm. would help you strengthen your nails, right? The nail grows from. It is part of your bones. It's mm -hmm. part of your body. So the calcium factor. A factor is is always there. All right. Um. But for the dipping stuff, they work for a while. Okay. It is not for you for them to be strong or for them to look the way they will look. You have to continue with that process every now and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now that you mentioned things to do with uh, you know long nails, yeah. we all crave for that. If not long, at least um, you know just medium and looking good yeah. and well polished for that matter. So then most of us will resort to you know seeking uh, uh, services that would do with acrylics, you know artificial nails, t mm -hmm. name them. Yeah. Is there anything good or bad about having these artificial nails? No. All I can say is get the right person. Okay. For me, it's like uh, going to hospital. Uh, because this is, it is therapeutic at the same time. Mm -hmm, it mm -hmm, has to, mm -hmm. taking care of your nails yeah. takes, it, it is a journey. Okay. So, and one thing mm -hmm. I, I find people doing is hoping from one nail tech to another nail tech. Mm -hmm. Maintain one nail tech. Mm -hmm. As long as this nail tech is growing and this, they are, they are growing their skill and mm -hmm. they're increasing in their knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, for like people, people they have been alive for a very long time. Yeah. Acrylics they don't last. Acrylics they don't. Uh, they don't stick. They hurt your nails. They don't. Mm -hmm. The way you remove them matters a lot. Okay. There are people who just remove them at home, mm -hmm. and that way they destroy the nail. They weaken the nail. So the other day they will be like, oh, 
these things destroyed my nails. Right. It was not so. For the stick-ons, they don't. It all depends with the product used. Mostly the uh, the, gel, uh, the glue. Right. Some glue react with the nail. And at the end of the day, the moment you're removing them, you'll find that my nails are yellow. Mm -hmm. Why is it? What is it happening? Right. So the glue that was used reacted with the with your nail. With the nail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, when you say that, uh, then can you confidently assure your client that uh, they need not to worry about the long-term effects of uh, using, uh, first of all, of course, the acrylics and all. I remember even with Cutex, before we had gel nail polishes, before we had the acrylics and everything, constantly you would be told, it's okay, you know, once you put uh, Cutex, you know, just give it like two, three weeks, then remove it, have your nail relaxing for a week, then go back to it and everything. So do we have long-term effects of this? If you use the right products, there is no long-term effect. Mm -hmm. The moment you will stop, you'll still continue to enjoy your nails. Mm -hmm. But if you use products that react with your nails, mm -hmm. at some point, you, they will become weaker. Mm -hmm. And the more people grow, uh, they are aging, the more their nails become weaker. Right. So if you, they used bad products, mm -hmm. at the end of time and uh, as they age, you find that their nails are like paper. Tell us the science of this, because I want to believe, this is what I want to believe, and I believe very many people believe so, mm -hmm. that you know, nail grows off. So once this is uh, this grows and it's cut, so literally whatever it is that is coming out should be as fresh as possible. So why is it that one should worry about the kind of products that they use? Because some uh, some product react the nail from its root. Okay. Yeah. Right. That is the reason. Mm -hmm. So it is something that can destroy your nail from the root. Mm -hmm. You'll find that there are people who will, the product that were used right. and. Uh, they reacted with the nail and now it is breaking. Mm -hmm. So for some, for like six months, even the nail that is growing, it is still breaking right. because the effect is there. Okay. It, it, it affected even the root. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Because then we do not have the blessings of knowing which are the right products or uh, which are the wrong products for that matter. Then what would you want to ask? The routine, normal routine of one taking care of their nails. Would you take us through that briefly? The normal routine at home? Yes, yeah, at home or anywhere. I mean, just the routine where, I'd, again, I would go and sit down at a technician and I know that they're doing the right thing. Because I've, I hate this filing aspect for sure. Let me tell you something. Sometimes mm -hmm. they will file and you find them, you know, chipping off some of your skin on the lower bit and everything. So how best can this be handled? So when I sit down, I know that this is being done well. It's the same thing that I would do at home and I'll still come out of this place feeling comfortable and looking good. Ah. Uh... If first, if you don't feel, it is a bit of tricky to know. Mm. Assuming at first you met, the first person you met did a bad job. Mm -hmm. Then he sets the standard of the rest. So not unless you meet the right person, mm -hmm. then it will be a bit tricky for you to know. Right. So first of all, you know, because you will feel your nails. You feel whether they, you, they feel, you feel pain. Mm -hmm. You feel um, whether... They are cutting when they, when they are cutting the cuticles. Mm. There is a bit of pain. Right. It is should not be a painful process at all. Okay. And some people will tell you, I've been feeling pain all along. It should not be painful. Mm -hmm. It is it is like a therapy thing. Mm -hmm. You should go there, and enjoy, and then come out and just because the process, uh, my process right. and someone's process mm -hmm. is a bit different, right. but the end result is the same. Is the same. Yeah. All right. Aha. Uh -huh. Time of COVID nineteen. We're here. Yeah. And like I said, I am literally scared of going to the nail a technician because of, well, reasons well known. What are you guys doing as of now and how are you balancing this and how are you assuring your clients that you know what, this is it. And what also are you doing to ensure that you abide by the missions that have been put by the government? Uh, first of all, it's, we are taking all the measures mm -hmm. by Ministry of Health. Uh, we are fumigating the place every morning. Mm -hmm. We are sanitizing our tables sanitizing everything mm. second thing we are taking appointments you just come we take like two clients at a time we you don't come with your friends okay. you come alone mm -hmm. uh, we don't offer magazines we don't we just maintain we use gloves mm -hmm. we use mask we use uh, we sanitize everything mm -hmm. so for us it's more of uh, making sure that no point of contact but only our hands mm -hmm. but at that point we have gloves mm -hmm. yeah all right so um as time goes by yeah. you know these processes evolve uh you know new techniques come on board and everything yeah. how do you ensure that you keep up 
to speed on the changes that we witnessed today on Martha's Nails. I mean, we never had jail nail polishes. Today, they have, of course, overcrowded the market or they're flowing in the market. Mm -hmm. Probably something else will come on board in years to come. How do you keep up with the market? I would say, first, it's uh, YouTube for us. Mm -hmm. You have to keep up with the trends that are going on. You have to practice every single day. Yeah. I keep on learning a new thing every single day. Not for purposes of uh, learning to do, but yeah. for learning to advance my knowledge so that I can have a wide range of knowledge. Because every day, mm -hmm. fashion is changing. And tomorrow something new will come. And you have to move with change. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So um, another thing then would be, we rarely think of uh, taking care of our nails. You know, yeah. there's some people who are like, okay, well, my nails are okay, and that's just it. I'll take a shower, I'll, 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 I'll moisturize myself the entire mm -hmm. body, and that's just it. What is the essence and what is the importance of taking that special care of one's nails, apart from the fact that you want them to look good? First of all, it's part of your dressing. Okay. It completes who you are in terms of how you dress. Mm -hmm. Second thing, it boosts your confidence. I've seen people who just come for that process and once they are done you will see even them you talking with their, with their fingers, <laughs> with their fingers. <laughs> yeah so there's something that it's like uh, uh, i would say mm -hmm. it's the way you can dress something you wear something nice mm -hmm. you will it, the same feeling comes on right. you want everybody to know you want uh, you you there is the way you don't even hide your fingers like you know there are some people when yeah, yeah, yeah. they are short they just mm -hh talk with their mm -hmm. fo hands folded so for me i would say it boosts even boost even your confidence. Right. Um, even uh, when when you meet a person, the first thing they see, nails comes out first. Mm -hmm. It's among the first things. Right. The hair, your hair, your nails, they matter a lot. Mm -hmm. So it also boosts your image. Yeah. All right. Okay. So. Um as time goes by, again, we also have different types, like we have rightfully put it. Yeah. Are there times when you would recommend something for someone, for an occasion, for a moment, for office wear and everything? And how then do you get to balance and blend that with the attires that one would wear on a day-to-day -day basis? Fashion is evolving so fast. Right. Even offices are changing things. So. As we are now, even mm -hmm. weddings, people are doing wedding with wearing African attires. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they wear those African attire, any mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't even matter right. the kind of nails they put on. Right. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Okay. But don't go too much because everybody understands their line of work oh, yeah. and their routine. Mm -hmm. So. You can't put on nails mm -hmm. that will not go with your routine. Okay. Yeah. All right. So every single day you know this is what I do, this is what I wear, this is how I need to mm -hmm. this is what I need to have. Right. Yeah. Playing with colors yeah. and designs yeah. is one thing that you know a lot of people fail on. Yeah. So when clients come to you, uh, do they always come with a fixed mind that I want this color? Mm -hmm. And in the event it's that way, mm -hmm. are there times you've been forced to convince them otherwise that you know what if you try this, it would work magic? <laughs> Uh, this is what I do. Nice. I always, if it is a new client, those who have, I'm used to, mm -hmm. it's a bit different. Right. But if it is a new client, I want, I don't know what you love, your colors, your taste. So I always ask you because ladies always have that car, 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 yeah, car save color. Color. Yes. They always have colors in their phone. Right. So I want to know what you have, what you love. So I would engage you first right. and then I will be able to understand you because I've done it for a while so if we have a conversation of 10 minutes mm -hmm. then I will know this is the best for you mm -hmm. this is what you love so I will always make that make sure that you are involved in our right. in what I'm doing I will not give you what I love I'll give you what you love right. but I'll do it to the best okay yeah okay so age does age matter in this case because I know for men it's clear and that's it yeah at least for you people we know does age then matter because nowadays I want to walk into a salon mm. or I want to walk into a nail you know uh, parlor and I walk in with my little girl and we have our nails done and everything does then the aspect of age play a role in how one you do your nails and second the colors that you use yeah age mm -hmm. matters um, it comes naturally. All it's right. not something, it's what you request. Okay. But you'll find that people who are between the age of 18 to 30, mm -hmm. 30 through 35, 35 
going onwards mm -hmm. they request totally different things right. and it, it is by default you find that people who are certain this age they will ask for this color mm. they will ask for this length they will ask for this shape like for the young people you find that they are doing more of ballerina right. the, that coffin yes. stuff mm -hmm. but for the aged one they will say give us a squovo mm. so it is something that comes naturally and before then before they go to that age you find that they were doing those long layers and ballerina stuff yeah but they stop it comes naturally all right yeah okay they hands and the legs yeah or maybe the toes and you know looking at the fingers yeah. of, you know like on your hands um any difference in how you take care of them uh your feet are a bit different mm -hmm. because they are not more exposed right. but one thing I, I always say people try to do stick on your feet okay they don't they're not supposed to do that because oh, the yeah? moment yeah because the moment they do that and then they wear clothes shoes mm -hmm. and uh they sweat because right. the feet sweat mm -hmm. there will be the interaction between the sweat and the glue of the of the stick on right. and there will be fungal infection you mm -hmm. find that people lose their fingers okay uh, their, their toe nails yeah it gets to that point yeah it gets to that point uh -huh. because but of it, the infections uh -huh. yeah so but, but then how you handle the legs you say that is, is not as hard or as radical as the way you would ha handle the hands yeah why is it so to me, I would have thought otherwise. I, you know, or deal with my legs proper, or deal with my feet r proper, as mm. opposed to my hands. Because they are not more exposed. Okay. Not unless for the pedicure, for the for the um, uh, pedicure softening the feet. Mm -hmm. That one, because maybe someone is wearing more of an open shoe. Yeah. But that one is once in a month. Mm -hmm. For your for your fingers, you're still working with them. That's why they are at danger right. of being uh, destroyed. Okay. But w your feet are always safe. Mm -hmm. They are doing nothing, just walking. Right. Yeah. There are times I march into a nail parlor and I'm pretty much in a hurry. But you know, interestingly, that you guys will always insist on, you know, extending the service all the way to my hands, yeah. a, a, a massage, sometimes a scrub, sometimes proper oiling. Yeah. Why? Is it that necessary? We always say one thing, when you're coming to us, don't come in a rush. Okay. Yeah. The reason we want to do that, we want to leave an impact. There's an, some impression we mm -hmm. want to leave. Mm -hmm. at, you, so this is just an after service and it's not really necessary. Is there a way that I can march there mm -hmm. and, you know, we remove this with, an, uh, with say, acetone? Mm -hmm. and we get, I mean, we let loose of this and yeah. then we just go straight to polishing and that's it? No, you can't go straight to polishing. Why? Because it will not last. There is a process of preparation. Okay. What matters most, first of one of the things that matters most is mm -hmm. nail prep. Right. If that one fails, the entire process will not will, will not work. Mm. For that moment, you will you will have it your will polish. Good, yes. But in the next one or two days, it will just peel off. Mm. Yeah. All right. So nail prep matters a lot. It is, it is it solves ninety percent of the mistakes that many people make mm -hmm. yeah okay so what is this one key thing that you'd want to tell the viewer who's watching you at home today that is very important about nail care general nail care for that matter even before it gets to that point where you have to put you know artificial nails mm -hmm. and even the polish and everything I would say the most important thing your nails determines your hygiene mm -hmm. I can look at your nails and I'm like this is this is you right. they talk a lot about you and even ladies, the interaction between a lady and a man, mm -hmm. the first thing a man will see, mm. it's nails. Right. Uh, it's your hair. Right. But when it comes to your nails, if you have to keep them long, make sure that they are clean because mm -hmm. nails can have a lot of dirt. Right. And if, if you keep them long, always keep on washing them. Uh, sanitize, what, uh, moisturizing them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Speaking of keeping them long, now before we go, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you find that we put very long nails, artificial nails. Yeah. I mean, is that the best as a nail technician you would advise for anyone? I know it's preference. I know it's what one prefers. Mm -hmm. But genuinely, is it always the best option that there is in the market? I know they're right. I would say, mm -hmm. us nail techs, we love long nails. Okay. Because we find them glamorous. Mm -hmm. Um, it is the best at a certain, depending with your daily lifestyle activities. activities. Yes. Yeah. So, if you are more into doing more manual work, mm -hmm. keep them short. Mm -hmm. Don't try to do them long because one thing, the weight shift to the top, and then now they become vulnerable to break. Right. Yeah. So, and then you will destroy the nails that you had. Mm -hmm. So it's not always good to have them long, but if your schedule 
it's okay for you to keep them long. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with and it. And sometimes we choose to keep them long for ages. You find that someone has done, you know, their nail mm. and they stay with the same, same, same design for like two months, three months, four months. Is there anything wrong with that? Yeah, very. You should always visit your salon or okay. your nail tech after at most, I always say at most, five weeks. So that's about how many months? That's like that's one a month, week, a month and, and a week. And a week. Uh -huh. The reason is this. Uh, it's the same thing with hair. Right you don't keep your hair for two months without washing it mm -hmm. it will it is not hygienic right. so it's the same thing with nails what happens with nails the, if they are long and they grow mm -hmm. the weight will shift to the top and they can break and they will hurt you all right yeah okay but if it is gel polish mm -hmm. short ones the, you can keep them for six weeks mm -hmm. yeah six seven weeks but for two months it's a no. It's a no, no, yeah, no. I hope that no. is not uh, some, some business. No, it's uh, not love business. Or anything, yeah? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah? Okay. We see very many, by the way, speaking of which, before I let go of you, mm. uh, we have seen very many, and, and, and I hope this does not uh, come out so negative, yeah. but it's a reality on ground. We've seen yeah. very many people uh, from uh, Rwanda, mm. from um, DR Congo, mm. flocking the market of beauty, mm -hmm. the nail market, yeah. the hair market. Yeah. What is so special about what they do that most of the ladies actually will flock into their shops and overlook what we've had locally for the longest of time? I think they are more hungry, okay. they are more passionate. All right. That is the thing. Mm. Uh, because I think they don't have anything to lose. The Kenyans are more comfortable. Yeah. And most people who join the salon industry, they always take it like, let me just do this. Uh, just uh, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. Be most people don't do it professionally. Mm -hmm. So you'll find that they just, it's something just to keep them running. Mm -hmm. Maybe they just want to do it for the next one year. Then after that, I join college mm -hmm. and go. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be professionals. It's a uh, by the way. So yeah. to distinguish that, but for somebody from Rwanda to come here and do it, this is their daily life. This is what they have purpose to do. Right. So they don't have anything else to do after mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, speaking of the pricing, the very last one, the yeah. very last one. Yeah. Because yes, the, uh, the price is vary. But you know, at least we need to have the standard one for the market. Yeah. Uh, as simple, as basic, as just doing your nails, cleaning them, and doing gel nail polish. Yeah. How much would it cost when? It ranges. It depends with the salon. Yes. Um, but at least we need we need to have that standard. Uh, it know, is very standard. hard to control the salon industry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing with I told you the same thing with uh, like hospital. Mm -hmm. If you go to Bagadi and yeah. you go to somewhere like uh, Aga Khan, mm -hmm. prices are different mm -hmm. because of different elements. Localities. Yeah, localities. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is not even about the service. Maybe the service is the same thing. Right. But there are different things that can de determine the prices. Mm -hmm. But I would also say the prices should not go overboard. Yeah. It should not be then too less. Because somebody who has a salon somewhere in Kiamaiko, somewhere, mm -hmm. those people who are there, the target audience, they can afford a certain it depends with your target market. Market, yeah. yeah. All right. But the products still remain the same price in the market. Yeah, they remain that the same. That is a sad reality. Yeah. Why I'm asking this is because sometimes we travel alone. And you know, when you are traveling and you're in a different country, mm -hmm. you really want to balance and you become a megongo. You know, I, I, I experienced that at some point, yeah. that, that you have to just calculate, I yeah. mean, their currency with your currency and find out whether, okay, the 500 Bob Nyumbani and everything. So yeah. sometimes it's good to understand the aspect of, uh, you know, the pricing and all that. So at Okenda, in, in some rich Mm. Thank yeah, you so much. It Thank was great so much. having you. Uh, of course, we're doing this with Fabian Njukia. It was uh, good having you. Unless there's something else that you'd want to tell the viewer in regards to this, I think uh, we can call it a day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. It was great having you once again. Next time, make sure, make sure, and I repeat, make sure that you carry the entire salon here. I will. All right. Otherwise, I'll come find you. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much. And I think it's important then that I cross over to this side of uh, checking out on what is happening on the roads here we are briefly because then yes we know that uh, courtesy of COVID-19 not so much is uh, happening but it's also very important that we take a look at uh, what the people are saying and we cross over to Mathri Root on Twitter I think let's take a look at it here yes Mathri Root and uh, some feedback from the people I don't know why I'm not getting it on screen. Mm -hmm. 
All right, but let's just go through it because, yeah, we also would have done the Google Maps. And uh, this is a tweet by uh, Bugusi who says, just seen statue of Christopher Columbus in Nairobi <laughs> River, thought America is far here. Well, interesting, I think also reacting to what we saw in Britain the other day and statues and all the uh, courtesy of the Floyd um, you know, demonstrations and people were pulling down the statues and heavy traffic along Waiyaki Way due to the huge potholes and rough road all along the way. Of course, that is a tweet by Asaki Wies. And we have um, Sam underscore K saying that uh, just seen uh, uh, Mudaiga service lane is no go zone. I repeat don't go via Mutaiga service lane. If you are using the road right now, it's important that you take note of that. KBS City Hopa, NEO Kenya, and New Kenya, yes, and all the buses operating in CBT, all sorts, and Lucky Summer Road, please wash your vehicles. Yes, wash. It's important that we talk about that right now. Sanitize, sanitize is pretty much important. And then we have Yes, let me take a look at this. I'm still not able to get that there. Kariga Wainaina says, Asante Apunda ni Mateke, better they are now that they were, better the way they are now than they were before. Some of you were born to be complainers, looking for every little reason to complain. It's better for that one year. I think they are complaining, uh, yes, Kanta is complaining about, as in people are complaining about the state of Thika Road and how tough, of course, the roads are. But then he says, at least... There's a smooth run. And for many of us who have stayed at Thika Road can clearly say that, you know, there's a huge, huge uh, difference. Whatever roads are being tarmacked in the CBD is total wasted, okay? I think we have so much feedback. I wish I would have been able to go through them. But then again, we say it's a wrap right here. Uh, today, you're going to figure out <laughs> your way to CBD or your destination. It was great having you. Thank you so much, so much, so much for your time. We've been doing this since 6 a.m. in the morning and up until now, we can only wish you nothing but the best throughout the day. And most importantly, I advise you to give it TV 47 because we have so much so in terms of programming and we'll also be taking a look at what is happening on the budget and matters politics. We'll be here to update you with more. My name is Linda Alela. It's a wrap right here on Morning Cafe. See you again tomorrow.